Hello and welcome to another episode of Cashmere Talk. I am your host, Kiki Tobar. I am the owner and founder of Cashmere Extensions. And this is your co-host, Emily Flam. Welcome, Emily. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Emily is actually the first person that I asked to be on my podcast. And the reason why is because I loved Emily's story so much. So we are going to get really heavy and hard into Emily's story and my story. And I think that the reason why I wanted to start a podcast was to share more about us and our personal lives because we get so many people that reach out and are like, wow, you guys are so cool. Like you guys are like the cool cashmere girls, <laughs> but you know, you see the success inside of us. You see us as these business entrepreneur hairstylists. And I think that showing who we really are inside and sharing our story, it helps a lot of people understand that we are just normal people, just like you. We are normal girls and we are just boss bitches and we <laughs> have stories that are just like yours. So I think that I just really wanted to share that about her. I, sh I share my story all the time on my Instagram and I will go in depth on that, but um, I love my team and I love every one of them and what makes them unique. So Emily. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you guys don't know, I think um, if you haven't been following me for a while, like you don't know Emily, um, she moved here not so long ago. How long have you been in Los Angeles? I moved last, it was end of February. We had drove across America, my girlfriend and my dad, and we have a menagerie of pets. We have three dogs <laughs> and two cats between my girlfriend and I, and we had trekked across America dodging blizzards last where did, February. But tell, so the, tell the people where you moved from. Oh, from Minnesota. Minnesota. Which is if you don't know where that is, I feel like a lot of people ask where that is it's at the very top next to Canada right in the middle yeah it's far like you're up there how far did it take you to drive like four days four days to California yeah. I remember texting you and being like oh my gosh are you guys okay <laughs> you brought your entire life out <laughs> here did. to California so I mean I I wanted to know like why did you want to move to California I mean I mean there's the obvious reasons the sunshine of course I think when I was younger, I always had those dreams of being like the hairstylist in the big city. I went to beauty school at 18. So being in Minnesota, the closest like big, big city was Chicago. And I was thinking maybe I want to go to Chicago. And then that didn't end up working out. And I started just working in Minnesota. And then my sister um, had dreams of going on Broadway in New York. So she was telling me she's going to go to New York after she graduates school in college. And just how life turned out, I had moved out of my parents' house and I actually moved in with my parents again to save money while my sister was in her senior year. We were going to go to New York together. So moved out, moved back home to save to go to New York. And I ended up getting really sick with cancer and so that was a whole different journey I was about to go on. So New York didn't work out, but I still had my eyes on the big city. And as I got older, California, I don't know, New York sounded cold. I was over the cold. California yeah. in the sunshine. I know. And the people and the laid back lifestyle. And just it just seemed so cool. It was still had that big dream of the big city, but I just need somewhere warmer. I'm just <laughs> obsessed with New York, but it's like the weather that I can't get over. It's the weather. And I feel like... It's just hard seeing my sister move there, like taking the subway everywhere. When I was younger, it sounded cool. As I got older, I'm like, I, even though I don't like to drive in LA, I'm like, I want a car. I don't want to have to rely on yeah. like a subway and all of that. So was that the reason why you didn't move to New York was because you got sick? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you wanted to move there. You wanted to be the sisters in the city. Yeah. Like I moved home and then <laughs> like Mary a couple Kate months, Ashley. Yes. A couple of months later. <laughs> I got very sick during her senior year. So I mean, the plan was just like move home and save. And I hadn't really even thought of the whole plan through. It was just to save that year. And yeah. And did you get like, I feel like when I moved to Los Angeles, I got a lot of backlash of people being like, oh my gosh, like, why do you want to move there? Like, you're crazy. The traffic, it's so expensive. Like, did you get backlash like that? I think I got backlash for sure on like the expense, but I think the pandemic is what really gave me the courage to go after it. I just felt like 
everyone was kind of in like a refresh moment of their life and it was time to make big moves that the world just it kind of feels like it's settling now, I feel like. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. But, but at the time when you moved, I think you we, we had conversations when I hired you about like the pandemic and being nervous about like moving and getting a job. And I remember your girlfriend being nervous about getting a job because of the pandemic and like we were still kind of in it. Yeah. So it it just felt like the right time because everything I, I don't know. I feel like everyone was kind of in that limbo. So they're like, all right, I guess move to California. That's like weird, but everything is weird. I think you and kind then- of like <laughs> say it so casually. Like, I don't know, just move to California. But you guys like, I think people listening to this are like, oh my gosh, like you just like got up and moved to California. Like that's not a light undertaking. So like go deeper. Like I, like, I don't know. It was so, for me, it was like so part of me. Like I just knew I had to be in California. Like I knew it, it was just like, it seemed natural. Did it feel natural to you? Like that decision? It felt natural. And my girlfriend really supported me and pushed me. So I was like, I think I want to move to California. And then I saw you post in our artist network that you were looking for an assistant. And I was like, should I apply? And she's like, well, we were, we had kind of talked about like, let's try and move at a certain time. And this was a little earlier. And she's like, well, why not? If it's a little early, we'll figure it out. And I just kept telling myself, like, I, I was like that Minnesota girl with like these dreams of moving to the big city. And I kept getting like pushback and things weren't, didn't work out for whatever reason. I was Mm -hmm. like, you know, if it's Mm -hmm. meant to be, it's going to I don't want to say it'll be easy because it wasn't, but like things will fall into place. I'm not going to get the pushback that I did in the past if it's meant to be. And I just, yeah, I think with the pandemic, I was like, you have one life to live and why not just, I just need to do it. And I think that's like what really set it in stone. Yeah. Was like having to be shut down and everything. So, you know, you, you definitely have to let things fall into what the way that they have to be. But then there comes moments where you're like, you know what, I need to be aggressive and I need to make like an aggressive decision and I need to go and I can't think anymore. I just need to go and do it because I do only have one life to live. Do you feel like that, this sounds so like cliche, but with your story of you having cancer and I feel like your cancer was kind of like life threatening, like you went through it. Like, do you feel like that made you be like, you know what? Like I'm not, I do only have one life to live. Like I'm just going to go for it. Like what? Cause I feel like your attitude is very much with everything. I, I work with you almost every day and I feel like your attitude very much is just like, whatever, like we'll just get through it. And do you feel like that helped you like be that way? Or have you always been that way? I think I've always been that way. And I like to go. One thing people have commented about me that can definitely be a weakness, but I see as a strength and I try and keep. That's like the question on the resume that everybody's (laughs) always like, what's your biggest weakness? And you're like, um, I think I'm too organized. (laughs) I like to go into things with like naivety and optimism that things are going to work out and not necessarily like I moved to California and I knew there's like sketchy neighborhoods and I was like, I don't really know what West Hollywood is. Honestly, like the salon, I was like, wow, I'm in a lesbian relationship. I didn't know West Hollywood was like this huge gay Mecca. I was just like, Los Angeles, I've been there. It's cool. I didn't know the neighborhoods or anything. And I'm like, I love that for you that you were, oh. didn't even know. <laughs> I had no idea. But that like, West Hollywood's like the gay capital of the world. Like, oh. I just like picked a place. I'm like, Kiki's not going to have her salon in like a sketchy place. So I found an apartment and it's like this amazing neighborhood. And I, I do kind of go into things a little naively, which can backfire but like even with my cancer it was very scary like my doctors were like don't look it up because it looks really bad and I was like okay I'll just have a positive attitude and then everyone around me was freaking out because they did look it up and I was like why they said just have positive attitude and I'll be fine and like that was well isn't it like research goes to show with anything that's like health related like with recovery recovery of surgery or anything like that it's so much about your mindset about like that's like the reason why people recover faster because they're optimistic or whatever it may be. Like, I don't know there's something about it. Like they've done research about it. Totally. And that was my doctor was like, just have a positive, like the biggest thing I could tell you is have a positive attitude and that's going to determine how this goes. And I don't know if I had that before or after. I know I had it going into cancer and I've kept it like with my move to California just like it's going to work out and it's going to be good. And if I feel weird feelings, we can always change our minds, but yeah. So the thing that like really turned me on about Emily was the fact that she had already been a hairstylist for like 10 years, right? Yeah. When, (sighs) when we met and 
obviously it's like as an entrepreneur, it's kind of scary hiring somebody from all over across the nation, like doesn't even live in the city. Normally as a requirement, we're kind of like, you kind of have to live local because, you know, I don't want to have to like be responsible for it not working out if it doesn't work out. Because so often with hiring new team members or trialing new people, we always do basically what they call like a working interview when we have people come and work. So instead of being like, oh, like, let's just like interview you and do a series of interviews, we have a working interview. So we have people come in and they sit down and um, they work a day with us. Like they work, we pay them and we see how they work with a team. And that's just really what's worked for us. And it's funny because some people will put on their best face for like one or two days, but then like the third day may go by and they may work with like another set of team members or something. And you kind of just like see the natural person start to come out. And sometimes it's not like that they're a bad person. They just don't really like vibe with us or fit. And then sometimes they are a bad person. Like sometimes they're just kind of weird <laughs> or <laughs> they just like lie about things or, you know, weird stuff happens and you're like, that was weird. Okay. Like we're just not going to invite them back. But, you know, sometimes it's just not really a good fit. But, you know, for Emily, it was like, I, I was really turned on by the fact that she was already had been a hairstylist for like 10 years. And we also have people submit a video and you would be surprised how many people aren't willing to just pop up and post a video of themselves. And our business is very marketed related. We are very encouraged to market and, and make sure that um, everybody who works there does their own marketing and shows their face and really works hard to get their clients. Of course, Cashmere helps them along the way, but you know, that was something that I really loved about her. She just popped open her camera. She just, you know, said what she needed to say. And she was like very straight to the point and like did everything that she needed to. And I could tell she just wanted it. And she was like, okay, I'm here. Like I have experience at everything. So Emily actually, is it our, it's only our one year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. One year. It's, it was one year when in March. Mm -hmm. So one year anniversary in March and she has gone from being an assistant to me and the team and to now she works she has four full days open on the floor and she's a full-time stylist at Cashmere just doing extensions. So she doesn't even take color only clients or anything. She's only doing NBR extensions and color with her guests. And that has come from a straight desire to just want to win and want to just be consistent. So the number one thing that Emily, I think is good at, I think this is your superpower is you're a very consistent bitch. And you're more consistent than anyone in the salon, even me, I think, when it comes to marketing. So you were already like that before I hired you. Because I remember going on your Instagram. I always do my work and I look at people and I kind of sort through their Instagram and I like look at who they are. And if they're not even showing up online when they're coming to work for me, I already see it as a red flag because I'm like, I can, I can help and encourage you. But if you're not already doing it, then I know that there's something going on where you just don't want to do it or there's no motivation or you don't really want to get out there. So, you know, it can be that way, but she was already in the academy. So I knew she already knew about marketing. I knew she already knew about business and she was showing up and she was doing the work already. And she already had a full book of business with NBR clients at her salon in Minnesota. So I was like, oh, wow, she's already posting like every day. Like, that's so good. Like, you know, she could use improvement inside of her photos or whatever. But like, I don't even care about that. I don't even care how good you are. What I care about is that you're consistent. What I care about is that you see yourself as a marketer and you're open to learning and you've already been doing hair for 10 years and you're open to learning. So sh tell me how you got that consistency and like what helped you create that habit. Cause I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. For me, I personally find that I have a harder time not being consistent. So I've been, I'm just going to relate it back to the gym because I've been trying really hard to get back into a workout cycle, but I was really good at working out and I worked out four to five times a week and I knew if I stopped, it would all go downhill and I did stop and it's been like two and a half years since I've like been consistent at my workout. So if I just put it in my day and it's kind of a non-negotiable, once I have that momentum going, I'm really good at keeping it going and it's almost the fear of losing the momentum because I know myself if it's lost it's so much harder to get back in than if you just make yourself do it every single day and you just don't give yourself an excuse yeah that really does happen doesn't it yeah because it even happens to me and I think you know you look at you look at people that are really good on Instagram and you're like man like I just don't have that in me and you just tell yourself the story like that's just not who I am like I I just don't show up like I don't want to show up or I I don't and I don't have the capacity to show up in reality it's just like 
these people are just have almost, do they have a fear of not showing up? But it even happens to me where I just, sometimes I'll lose that momentum and then I just kind of fall off the bandwagon slightly. Like, and then I stop posting altogether. And then the longer I go, the harder it gets to get totally. back on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think you made it super easy when I moved because I was really excited to come to this one. You're like, we're all working together. If you work on this client, then you can post that client. And I had already been in Minnesota trying to market and trying to market every day. And I didn't have a full, full book of MBR, but that was all I was trying to market. So it was hard for me to come up with post ideas where when I was helping you guys, I was like, wow, if I helped with this client, I can post about the hair too. So now I have this whole plethora. So I felt so grateful. I was like, this is so much easier. Yeah. It's like so I, awesome. The way I we have do all it. this content now yeah. working at this salon where I was just like client by client in Minnesota trying to build like, okay, one more person to like add to my portfolio versus all the people that are coming to cashmere. You're, yeah. you're pretty lucky to Honestly, have all of that. In any industry. And when I started this podcast, I did not want it to be just hairstylist focused. I wanted it to be like, I was telling Emily, like, I want it to be like entrepreneurial focused. I want it to be about all the people that own a business and especially a small business because the people who own the small businesses are the ones who feel the most alone. I think Yeah, it's not the people with big corporations who have a lot of employees. And like when you're alone, like you feel like you don't really have anybody, like you're just doing the grind every day. Like you may have a couple people here or there, but you know, you feel like you're alone, but inside of this, you don't, you don't really feel like that. And I, and I wanted to share that with her. And I was kind of like letting her know, like, you know, collaboration inside of our salon and collaboration in any industry is key. Like you really can't do everything by yourself. And I, the more I've grown this business, the more I've realized that, like, you know what, I, I actually probably could do everything because of my personality. I'm very <laughs> stubborn and I'm like, bitch, I'm going to do it myself. Like, like look at us in here in this podcast, like with the lighting and all the things. And I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to figure it out. Like I'm going to figure it out. And that's kind of my attitude, but I know I'm not going to go further faster if I do it all by myself. And so that same mindset I have adopted inside of Kashmir because it was so difficult for me to grow my clientele. And, um, once I had a niche like NBR extensions, it was easier, but I still had to fight and I still had to take my own. And I feel like collaboration and reaching down and helping those and lifting them up, it's key. And so I ha now have the tools and I have the dream clientele, but let me help you get where I am because that's where I find fulfillment It's no longer the money. I love making money and I love seeing money come into my account, but there's like, there's like, then you just start making it and you feel abundant and you have what you want. And I know I can go out and buy what I want, but like what I really find joy in is like helping other people. So it's something that we do at Cashmere that if you work at a salon and you are struggling right now, building your clientele, you may be like a level one stylist or an assistant. And you're like, I'm never going to get there. If you feel like that and you're listening to this, you have to collaborate with your other teammates. And so we allow our assistants and our newer members to post the work if they helped with it. You can post the work, you can market it, give credit where credit is due, but use that content to get the people that you want in your chair. And I'm not gonna hand you anything I don't feel like you know you're capable of, or if I don't feel like you're ready to do that, like I'm not going to, but I'm also not gonna like make you feel super comfortable where you are. So our newest assistant, Elia, I feel like she's in that <laughs> hazing zone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, slightly hazed, she's slightly but we're hazed. supporting her. We love her dearly and we're cheering her along the way as she's getting uncomfortable. She's getting hazed by her big sisters at Kashmir. Like, so we're all, <laughs> we're all in our thirties at Kashmir. We're all kind of like have that big sister mentality. You're a big sister. I'm a big sister. I'm a big sister, but I have a big, big sister too. So like, I know what it feels like to be the big sister, but I also have a big sister. I'm like, I feel that bully energy. <laughs> Scarlett's a big sister. And actually, I think Elia is a big sister, or I don't actually know, but she's, she's the little the sister. Ish. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to ask her tomorrow. Um, but, she, you know, this is kind of what we've been doing is it's like this big sister love. Like, you know what? Like, we want you to be where we are. So it doesn't come without a little bit of hazing where it's kind of like, you got to be tough. You got to be strong. We're going to support you and we're never going to let you fall. But we want you to be where we are. And if you can't handle that, fine. You don't have to. You don't have to work here. But that's why the requirements, I feel like it's like, we don't have a huge team, but we're okay with that. And I'm okay with that. Like, that's not my vision. I don't want a huge 20 chair salon. I don't see that in my eyes 
that may be successful for somebody building a salon on a big scale. But for me, it's not really like my, my vibe. I, I'm very happy where we are. And so, you know, that's, that's one of those things that it's, it's just kind of a requirement. And then we just laugh about it every day with Elia. <laughs> So she's great though. And she definitely plays along and pushes all of us and she'll come up with little challenges or we did like a 30 mm-hmm. day posting challenge. She's like, all right, I'm not going to lose. And yeah, hops yeah. right in. And so. she hops right in. So she motivates us. That's the thing that I love too. It's, it's hard when you have like the same team and you're working the same team. Like you don't really get a lot of new team members. It's so refreshing when you get new people in the space. It's almost like I was just thinking about it on our drive over here. When you hire a new team member, it's almost like you're in this romanticizing phase where you're like, oh, like that's a funny joke. Like I've never (laughs) heard that joke before. And you like laugh at their jokes and everything. And then like you start to become in this committed relationship. And like any of you who are listening who are in a committed relationship with somebody with at least a couple years, like you've heard all the jokes, like you'll, you don't even laugh anymore because the honeymoon phase wears off. You know, (laughs) it's like every once in a while you'll say a joke and you'll be like, oh, that was funny. Where'd you get that one? Did you pick that one up at the farmer's market? That was good. So, (laughs) you know, you kind of like have these moments, but when you have a new team member, you're like, wow, you just find them endearing. You know, you find them like motivating. You want to show up in your best outfit every day because you're like, oh yeah, like we have a new person. Like we got to be a good example and all this good stuff. And one thing I've learned you know, just from other people that are inspirational to me is like, we never stop hiring at Kashmir. I don't think the applications are ever like closed because I'm always willing to have a new person on the team. I'm always keeping my mind open to like who we could have help us. Of course, going back to like, I know I can't do everything. And now my mind is a little more open about that. And another person that we just hired on is Nicole. And Nicole's a boss bitch. She's our copywriter and she is just like corporate and like organized and she's got spreadsheets and she's got all these things that like us as artists, assignments and dates were like, oh my gosh, Nicole, another assignment. But I love it because it's totally inspiring with like all of her ideas and things she sends us. But yeah. she's like, next week, this time, 9 a.m. Like, oh, 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 another assignment. Oh gosh. Yes, sir. <laughs> like we, we get so like nervous about it sometimes, but don't you feel like it's like pushes you and you feel like accomplished once you do those assignments? Oh, it totally has inspired me and just has me thinking a little bit different about my marketing. And then when we take like really good photos or we like do something really cool, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to show Nicole. She's going to be obsessed. Nicole's going to be so proud of us. <laughs> like Nicole's also one of our sisters. She's like, you know, she's like supportive and she loves us. And she's also a guest in in the cashmere space too, which I love. I love working with people on my team that also wear the brand and use the brand, you know, cause they're like bought into that cult like, you know, feel. And so I just love that because they trust us and we like get each other. She, she's the one who creates a lot of our posts and a lot of our writing. And so anything like that. And, you know, we haven't had her on the team for very long. Like we hired her in what, February? Yeah. But that was like one of the things that was really hard for me to let go of because I was like, you know, I'm a perfectionist. Like I want all the content on that page to be good. But listen, the content isn't very good when you're not posting shit. Yeah. You know, it's a lot to post to your page. And then if you're trying to manage a business page too. Yeah. I don't actually think you can do it as good. Like if you're trying to do everything and you're trying to juggle all these things, like the quality of it, if you're posting good, but you're only posting a couple times a week, like that defeats the purpose of growing a business. Yeah. You know, that's going to kind of get you off. And like, so sometimes people say like, oh, should I have like two Instagrams? Like I actually disagree. I think you should have one and you should kill it and you should go hard and you should have one brand and push and post multiple times a day or at least once a day, show up, at least show your face in that one platform and just really go for it. And then if you have a business, like have somebody help you with it. Maybe you start doing on your own, but you have to make sure that whatever you guys are doing together is like the same voice, the same thing. Like you guys are on the same page. And, and I think that once I started to realize that, like, this is strategy, like, wow, I never really thought that when I owned a salon, I was going to be so much of a strategist inside of the business. Did you ever think that? Like how, how much of this is like not hair, It's like, once you get past that hump of like learning hair and being good at hair, it's like this whole next level of Tetris. I feel like I'm like learning that right now, like the strategy. And I was really good, like you were saying, at being consistent. And now I'm trying to find like, okay, I'm consistent. Now is there like a strategy within my marketing that can help me grow even more Mm -hmm. versus just 
putting out pretty content and I feel like I'm in that season and Nicole having her and hearing her strategies is what's really like oh there can be like a rhyme and a reason to what I'm doing instead of just like throwing out here's a pretty blonde yeah like I think what Nicole says a lot that hits me is she says when you don't want to just like throw something out there and hope it sticks like everything that you do has to have intention and I think I just thought you know just post every day and like if as long as you show up, it's good enough. Yeah. Which will work know? for a while. It'll but work then... for a while. But when you want to get to the level of like having a brand and having a following and people wanting you and wanting to come to you and being super loyal and like, you know, just that whole energy, like you have to take it to the next level. Yeah. Everything that these people are doing, like when you think about the people that you buy from, the people that you consume from, like your favorite I don't know, like whatever it is, like I'm obsessed with skims right now. And I'm sure like, I just got you on that following. Like, yeah, you like skims too now. Cause I got you on it. Somebody else got me on it. And like skims is a good marketing. Like they're, they're good at marketing. They're good at putting their shit out there. And like, eventually I caved because they're consistent, but it's all strategy. It's all, they've got dozens of people talking about strategy in their boardrooms. And so if you want to take your business to the next level, you don't need dozens of people, but you need at least one. Like you need, you need to strategize. And if you're not good at that, that's fine. Like most people aren't. Most entrepreneurs with that mindset, they're not necessarily strategists, but they know the right strategist. They know how to collaborate and to like, you know, do things the right way. The entrepreneurs really have like the vision, you know, they got the mindset. And I think like hairstylists are such good artists and they're such good conversationalists and um they don't really like think about strategy too much inside of it and I don't even think you necessarily have to do extensions to be successful like we what about Ricardo love Ricardo you tell, just need a good strategy tell our friends about Ricardo oh do you my know gosh his handle I'll look it up okay so it's Burnett's specialist or something so our client showed us his picture and we were all in awe he is like the most amazing brunette specialist. our client that came in today in the salon she's the one who showed us ricardo's yes. page and um hang on oh here it is so we were doing ricardo, this client. ricardo a l o n s o beauty what is it ricardo alonzo beauty ricardo alonzo beauty if you're listening to this <laughs> big we fans. love you big fans so ricardo is a marketer his page is like perfectly branded. How often everyone and their mom, I feel like, is a blonde specialist in like all of the U.S. But how often do you see a brunette specialist? And then you go to his page. His pictures are perfection. I'm not a caption reader, so unclear on his captions. I will not. It's hard to get me to read You're a caption. Not a caption consumer. His videos, great. He is like super cute in his stories. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be your friend. He just looks like- He has 30,000 followers. Like he's doing well for himself. Yeah. I'm not sure like about his bank account, but it looks like I- I think his bank account was full of Ricardo. I hope so. Yeah. And And we secretly talk about Ricardo a lot at the salon because we were like, Ricardo can work here if he wants. Ricardo. And whenever we do a good brunette, we're like, Ricardo would be so proud. (laughs) Oh, like anytime we're doing like a good dimensional brunette- because he's a brunette specialist. I don't, did we clarify that? Yeah. So that's okay, all yeah. he does. His whole page, literally, you will not find a single blonde head. And it's so beautiful and so well marketed. So you don't, like Kiki was saying, have to be an extension specialist. But we saw his page and we're like, wow, his branding is amazing. We know exactly what he does. He does beautiful brunettes. You go to his page and like in the first like couple of tiles, you're like, oh yeah, he's a dimensional brunette specialist. Like how did we even, how did we even know that? Did, yeah. Did our client tell us that? No, we, I, I don't, I, I don't think know. it's in his, oh, it's in his top thing. But if yeah. you just look at it too, you're just like, oh, all he does is brunettes. And you're like, these are all so beautiful. But that's the kind of energy that we like. Like we like people that are just, you know, okay, this is exactly what I do to the point. Like I'm good at this. And when our clients bring up, it's always flattering when our clients bring us our own inspo photos. Mm. We're like, oh, thank you. Like I love <laughs> You and like any hairstylist listening is like, yes, super great. But like, I love when I get other people's photos too. Cause I'm, I love the challenge and I love that, you know, my clients have inspiration like this and I just love empowering other hairstylists. Cause I don't think you, everyone has to do extensions to be successful. I think anyone can use the tools that we've learned doing what we do and all of the courses that we've taken, all the classes and and money that we've invested. And when I say money, like Emily and I both have invested over $15,000 inside of just business 
and learning how to like do more. And, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do extensions, but you know, you can really use the tools that we have. And, and, and actually, do you think about this? What we do is like applied to so many businesses. Totally. And everything that, you know, aspires, like the way we talk about marketing, the way we talk about like, you know, hiring and firing and teams, like everything that we talk about. I'm like, this will work for a dental assistant. Oh, this will work for like, even like a nurse. Oh, this will work for like, you know, somebody who does, I don't even know, like anything. I just think about it. I'm like, oh yeah, no, this same concept works for a personal trainer. I always think about personal trainers. And I'm like, they're like the same as us. Yeah, they just post every day, show some pictures before They're doing and physical labor. They're working with guests. Like they're, you know, doing all this stuff. And like everything is kind of like about marketing. Like mm-hmm. anything that you do, really, if you're not showing up, like you don't exist. Like what kind of person are you going to be if you just like decide to just live? I mean, not saying like the people who just don't have Instagram, they're probably not even watching this so we can talk shit on them. <laughs> Sorry, guys out we, there. No, but really, though, it's like, you know, that's great for you if you have you know a job where you don't have to do that. I think Austin, my husband, actually kind of has that job where he's like, uh, I don't really have to show up. And and I, I feel wonder like if Austin did get an Instagram, though, because he has a personality. He has he one. Could, Emily, he has one. He's on Instagram all the time. He needs to blow up his solar. Listen, I Austin got so addicted to Instagram last week that he had to change his Instagram to Chinese. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's not even so that he would stop logging in because I I just catch him scrolling and I'd always call him out like a dick. I'm like, get off your phone. Cause like normally I'm just so sick of being on my phone because I content create so much on my phone that like, I don't even want to consume content. I'm like over it. Like I'll consume on TikTok, but I don't like to consume on Instagram. So he'll just scroll, 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 scroll. And like, I'm like all that time that you're wasting scrolling, scrolling, like what could you be doing with your time? You know? You could be using that time to like build a business on Instagram, like get on there, sell some solar on Instagram. Can you yeah. imagine? I, I've been telling him for years. My Nobody's husband, ever done that. That he, would be, he, yeah, he's chattier than I am. He never stops talking. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's great that people have those jobs where they just don't have to do anything. They don't have to show up on Instagram. They don't have to do that. But that's this, this, this talking isn't for you. It's for the, like all the other people who want to, you know, work for themselves or, or do whatever they want. And, I mean, I think if you're going to live that type of life, you have to just be okay with being a marketer and just knowing like whatever I'm going to do, I got to show up and I got to do it. Um, And so I feel like that's kind of like we kind of wrapped it up. Yeah. Like show up, be brave and just do it. Just freaking do it. Because if you want to work for yourself and you want to have that lifestyle where you don't have to do the nine to five, you know, you don't want to have to answer to somebody and clock in and clock out. Eventually it's going to lead you to a position where we are. So, you know, collaboration and marketing and just kind of owning that and stop telling yourself the story that you aren't that person because it just takes you to decide that you are that person. I know that's how it was for me. Um, and the day that I made that decision that I was going to show up and be responsible for my own success and not blame it on other people was the day that my life changed forever. And I know that's probably true for you too. So I feel like that's a great way to end this podcast. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, our Instagram is cashmere extensions. Emily's is Emily flam and mine is Kiki Tobar. Follow us on Instagram. Let us know how you like the podcast subscribe i don't know what else i'm supposed to say but. subscribe like give us um i don't know how many stars give us all the stars I you can like if it's get five like, or ten but yeah. i think it's five give us five stars i think we should get ten if there's an option for ten definitely do that yeah ten out of ten. Oh, five on yelp for sure yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in <laughs> bye-bye <laughs> Thank you.